Hello everybody, it's Bill, it's that college football guy here with another video. You saw the title, Subscriber Roll Call Predictions. Okay, I do the Subscriber Roll Call, we know this. You'll be seeing some flashes of lightning here, um, but I'm going to explain this real quick. Subscriber Roll Call, I do for all the subscriber schools. I'll ask you, what's your favorite school, what do you root for? Now, I put it down the Subscriber Roll Call. Now, every school that is not in the ACC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, the SEC, the American, the Mountain West, the Pac-12, and the Sun Belt, if you're not in one of those conferences, I will do an individual prediction for those schools, and I'm going to pack them together. And this one is the first four, which is going to be Middle Tennessee State, Notre Dame, Toledo, and Division III's Wisconsin Whitewater, which I will fully admit I could not get much information about it. We have a Wisconsin Whitewater fan who suggests this, this is a roll call. Perhaps he can elaborate on them in the comments when it comes into this. Um, but yeah, so that's how this is going to go right now. If you start hearing, I don't know if you can hear that, like banging on the windshield a little bit. I'm hearing Louisville thunderstorm alert coming in. They're supposedly talking about, I'm right now in a shared terminal that I share, we share with another company. You know, I'm literally right across from the office. I parked here on purpose because they're talking about 60 mile an hour winds in an hour with possibly inch size hail, possibly bigger. No tornado threats yet. So I did it just in case because I already know where the basement is in this place. So I can go crawl into that if, just in case a tornado touches down near here. Yeah, that means you look forward to. So if you hear anything panging on the on the glass, there's going to be rain or hail. So if it, it, I've... This shouldn't take too long. But anyway, I've babbled on long enough. Middle Tennessee State, first up. From Conference USA, subscriber school. Four and eight last year in Conference USA. Um, Vegas has your win total of four and a half. Um, Rick Stockskill, longtime coach. Let go, fired, however you want to put it. New head coach Derek Mason takes over. Name sound familiar. Former head coach, former defensive coordinator at Stanford. Former head coach at Vandy. Previously, he just was the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State. He takes over the job. How new staff, new everything. How else that going to go in here? Um, they have a new OC, who's also the OC and the quarterbacks coach. That's Bodie Reader. Uh, he was previously the OC and the QB coach at Northern Iowa. Um, so we'll see how well that translates. Um, Nicholas Vadiato, quarterback who did did some things last year. Um, he's back. Can he get this offense steady? Because that's going to be kind of thing. Get everybody calm down here. Wide receiver room. It's just about a complete rebuild. Um, a lot of new faces. How well they can do is it's it's pretty well gutted. New defensive coordinator though, Brian Stewart. Derek Mason's a defensive coordinator himself, but he brought in a strong guy. He knows Brian Stewart. If you remember the XFL, he was the defensive coordinator for the Houston Houston Roughnecks. Um, he's taken over as defensive coordinator here. So the defense has to be producing here. Last year's defense, the thing they lacked, they did okay in things. They were outman, out, outmanned, but they were really at a pass rush. Stewart kind of excels at that, so that's going to be hopefully improve the pass rush. So how's our schedule going? Well, week one, they're hosting Tennessee Tech. Yeah, that's a dub. Then they're on the road at Ole Miss. Yikes. Yeah, we saw the SEC predictions and no shock. They lose to Ole Miss. Then they're at home against Western Kentucky, fellow Conference USA school. You lost by 21 on the road last year. I don't think you have enough firepower to come up with them. New staff early in the year, even though you're at home again. Yes, they're playing two consecutive years. Excuse me, but less than 21 on the road. You're playing back at home again this year. Even though you're at home, I'm having you lose to Western Kentucky. Then you're at home against Duke. If you watch the ACC predictions, you know they lose to Duke. Then you're on the road at Memphis. Um, Memphis, hostile environment. They got better players than you. I'm sorry, you're losing that one. Then you get the bye, so you're one and four going into the bye. Then things get a little bit better because you're out of the non-cons. I mean, Tennessee Tech, Ole Miss, Duke, and Memphis. That's a hell of a non-con schedule for a G5. Um, they come out of the bye at Louisiana Tech. You beat them by eight at home last year. Now you're on the road. You're retooling, but so are they. Um, they've... Um, also have a lot of somewhat of a major rebuild in areas as well. So I'm picking you to beat Louisiana Tech. Then you're at home against Kennesaw State. Um, this game, they're just coming in. This is their first year in there, but they were not exactly a slouch when they came in. I put this as a coin flip game. You're at home. 
So I'm giving you the edge over Kennesaw State. On the road at Jacksonville State. Uh, you lost to them by 15 at home last year. Now you're on the road. You're losing again. I mean, don't be surprised if Jacksonville State's battling Liberty for the uh, Conference USA Championship. But there's that's a possibility. But anyway, on the road at UTEP next. You beat them by four last year at home. Now you're on the road. But they have a little bit of issues, too. I'm going to give you the edge and have you beating UTEP. But that game could be a coin flip either way. Then you're at home against Liberty. This is a game... That a lot of people say, okay, they lost. Even they're going to lose to Liberty. You understand they went to Liberty last year and only lost by seven. They were the one of the ones who gave a scare, played Liberty the closest because Liberty overlooked them. Now they're at home. Liberty's not going to overlook you. They're not going to look at you as a free pass. Last year was your chance to get them. This year they're going to come in and know what they're getting. They're going to come in full bore, and they're going to beat you. Then you get a bye, come out of the bye at home against New Mexico State. New Mexico State, you lost by six on the road last year. They have a brand new coaching staff coming in. A lot of issues, a lot of problems, same as you. But it's end of the year, and you're at home. Last game at home game of the season. I have you beating Mexico State. You finish the season off on the road at FIU, who you beat by 34 at home last year. May not be as big a margin of victory, but have you closing out with a victory over FIU. So after a one and four start, you finish six and six in conference USA. Five and three in conference. Next up we have Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish. Uh, by the way, if you want to know the uh, nickname of Middle Tennessee State, they're the Blue Raiders, which I kind of was a kind of a cool nickname. Um, Notre Dame. Ten and three last year. They beat Oregon State in the uh, Oregon State in the Sun Bowl. Vegas has their win total of ten and a half. Marvin Freeman is back, 19-8 and eight in the second two seasons at Notre Dame. Um, you know, it's like the, the win totals for you. Like He actually played a little more head coach in two seasons. He uh, coached the Fiesta Bowl when uh, Brian Kelly left to go to LSU. Um, got the L, though. But the big difference here with Notre Dame is Notre Dame, they wanted to like their offense, so they picked the new offensive coordinator, Mike Denbrock. Those of us in the SEC know who he is. He's the former OC at LSU, the guy who created a – mobile quarterback offense around Jalen Daniels. He doesn't have Jane, doesn't have Daniels anymore. He's got Riley Leonard. Not quite as athletic, but he can make it work. Which I heard that, I'm like, mm, he picked the right OC with the right quarterback. All right, how else is this going to get together with the offense? <sighs> On the... Esteem left Notre Dame. Who's taking over the rushing tag? We're going to find out about that. The offensive line could have some questions about this because of playing on there. It's one of the key pieces in the offense. Cohesion there is going to be an issue. but Not an issue, but it's going to be it needs to get fixed together quickly. But when the schedule will be a different thing, especially early on. But can the defensive line get a pass rush? That was a problem last year. They need to get one this year. We're going to see how it works. All right, schedule. You start off at season on the road at Texas A&M. If you watch the SEC predictions, you know the fact that you're beating Texas A&M. Then you're at home against Northern Illinois. Max Gold, they don't have a chance. You're beating them. On the road at Purdue. If you check the Big Ten predictions, you know I have them beating Purdue. Then you're home against Miami, Ohio. Defending Mac champs, I have you beating Miami, Ohio. They just have the firepower. You're at home against Louisville the next game. If you watch the ACC prediction, I have them beating Louisville. So they're 5-0 and going to the bye. You come out of the bye at home against Stanford. ACC prediction in there, but this is no surprise. They're beating Stanford. Then you're on the road at Georgia Tech. Uh, we saw the ACC predictions. This may be a closer game than some people think, but I have them beating Georgia Tech. Then they're on the road at Navy. Um, Navy, they beat them by 35 in Dublin last year. That could have been jet lag, but it's Navy. They're, they're not, they don't have Notre Dame's firepower. They're going to beat Navy. So now they are 8-0 going into the bye. Their second bye. Come out of the bye at home against Florida State. You saw the ACC predictions. This is one of Florida State's two losses. They beat Florida State. They're home against Virginia. If you saw the ACC prediction video on that one, they're beating Virginia. Then they're on the road at Army. Army does not have the firepower to keep up. They beat Army. And then the last game of the season is on the road at Southern Cal. This is in the Pac-12 prediction, in the Big, Cup, Big Ten predictions. They beat him by 28 last year at home. And I said the fact for this is I didn't want to tip off Notre Dame's 
schedule when I did predictions. Because I actually did them first before everybody else. I think Notre Dame is going to come in overconfident. We beat Southern Cal last year. They're a tough team, but they're not good enough. We're going to beat them. No, you're not. You're catching the L. And you're finishing the season 11-1. and one. All right, next up, Toledo. The Rockets from the MAC finished 11-3 last year. Um, hold on. Lost to Wyoming in the Arizona Bowl. Uh, head coach Jason Candle took over. Candle, who took over for Matt Campbell, not bad. I think he's 65 and 35 and eight seasons at Toledo. Um, question Who is replacing Daquan Finn? Your superstar quarterback who's now at Baylor. Um, Tucker Gleason, Mo he looks like a guy who's in the front of the lead, for the back, for, in the lead for the starting quarterback job. We'll see what that holds up. The offensive line, I think, is going to take a step back. Your guys' offensive line last year was absolutely ruthless. You're one of the best in fewest sacks allowed. But between losses and the transfer portal, you guys got hit by the transfer portal a lot. You lost a lot of players to the transfer portal because the big power schools realized you had talent and they snatched people up. So you have a lot of work on the offensive line to replace people. How well is all that going to come together? And the secondary lost some talent too. Quite a bit, actually. Well, not quite a bit, but I'm kidding. Everybody else step up and fill the holes here. All right, let's start with the schedule. You're at home get week one against Duquesne. Uh, yeah, that's a dub. Then you're at home again the second week against UMass. You beat them by 17 on the road. I think it's an Amherst, remember correctly. Um, I have you beating UMass again. Then you're on the road at Mississippi State. We saw the SEC predictions. You already know I predicted this. They're losing to Mississippi State. Then they're on the road at Western Kentucky. This game, because of how Jason Candle runs his offense and how Western Kentucky runs their offense, they're both like run and gun, high power, maybe not run and gun, but high powered offenses. This is going to be a G5 pinball machine. This is one of the games I got circled to watch because this thing is going to be crazy. It's at Western Kentucky. If it's at home, I would give you the win. But because you're on the road, I'm giving you the loss. That puts you at two and two going into the bye. Then you're at home against Miami, Ohio. Miami, Ohio, the team that you uh, beat by four in the regular season, but you lost to by nine in the MAC championship game. Uh, Miami, Ohio, who has uh, Gabbard as their starting quarterback. I forgot. Um, who's in his seventh? season this coming season he's back i mean the man ohio he played like the first eight games got hurt didn't finish the season they won the mac championship without him now they're starting quarterbacks back and the fact that's there the fact that he's back the fact that you lost to con finn i'm picking you to lose you know you got the buy and you're at home i'm picking you to lose to miami ohio i'm sorry toledo then you're on the road at Buffalo. You beat them by 18 at home last year. They just don't have... They're, in, they're not beating you. You're beating Buffalo. On the road at Northern Illinois, you lost to them by two at home last year. Now you're on the road. They're also doing a rebuild. But you have a distinct coaching advantage. So even though you lost last year and you're going on the road, I'm picking you to get the win here. Then you're at home against Bowling Green. Dogfight game. You beat them by one on the road, but now you're playing them at home. I'm having you beating Bowling Green. Then you're on the road at Eastern Michigan. You beat them by 26 at home last year. The margin of victory may not be as big, but I have you beating Eastern Michigan. Then you get your second bye. Come out of the second bye at home against Central Michigan, where you beat them by 15 on the road last year. Now you're at home. You're beating them again. Then you're home against Ohio. This is going to be a dogfight. And I look at the game, and this one is coin flip. Who's at home? Because that's the only advantage I see in this. Because it's pretty damn close. You're at home, so I'm giving you the edge over Toledo. Over Toledo. Over Ohio. And then finishing the season on the road at Akron. Akron's one of the worst teams in college football. Still is. You're beating Akron. So after starting the season 2-3, and three, you go on a seven-game winning streak to finish 9-3. and 7-1 and one in conference. And last... And he's the most interesting one I'm doing. Wisconsin Whitewater from Division Three. No, 
I have a Wisconsin bar to subscribe but the center. No, the biggest didn't give you any win total odds. No idea. If I had a guess, they'd probably be like nine, nine and a half. Um, first off, those are the Wisconsin White where they play in the WIAC, the WIAC, the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Ten, uh, 20 schools in it. Um, they were 11-2 last season. They lost to um, the Warburg or Wartburg in the quarterfinals in the Division Three playoffs. Head coach uh, Jason Randall, his name is. He was a he, he was eleven and two last year in his first year as head coach. Um, one thing I find about this team is the fact it's very hard to find certain information. One thing I have looked at it, and he is a former player with the staff and the pedigree. Wisconsin Whitewater, with their success, have basically been plug and play. It's the system. Now the defense has changed. But the offense, it's changed, it's changed a little bit here and there. But I, I, I look at this kind of like a plug and play. Mike, if I'm wrong, but I've looked at what I've said, they've basically been saying plug and play. If I'm wrong, and our Wisconsin fan can... <laughs> <coughs> Still got this crud. Well, let us know in the comments. Um, so, basically, I look at this thing. If you follow the instructions and follow your coaches, you're going to do well. So, shall we get into this? All right. First off, they start off their season with a bye because they start a week later than everybody else. They also only play a 10-game schedule. Um, they start off the season against John Carroll, uh, who they beat them by four on the road last year. Now you got them at home. That's a win. On the road to Roosevelt. I couldn't find much about them. Um, didn't play them last year. I'm a little leery about them. But I'm going to give you the edge because of your history. I'm going to give you the win over at Roosevelt. Then you're at home against Mary Harden Baylor. Um, you beat them by three on the road last year. Now you got them at home. I'm giving you the win. Then you get your bye. Now comes the UW parade. Seven straight games where it's UW at University of Wisconsin at. Seven straight games. So I'm just going to... We have... Next one is Oshkosh. Um, you beat them by 16 on the road last year. Got them at home. You're beating them again. At Stout, um, you beat them by 17 at home last year. You got them on the road. So margin of victory may not be as big. Beat them again. Stevens Point... Um, you beat them 48 to nothing on the road last year. Yeah, I'm very comfortable giving you the win on that one at home. Then you face Plattsville the next week. You beat them by 22 at home last year. You got them on the road. I don't think the margin of victory will be as big, but you're going to beat Plattsville. Then you're at home against River Falls. You beat them by seven on the road. I think it'll be more, more bigger margin of victory this year. You're going to, second year in the system, you're going to do better than beat River Falls. At Lacrosse. Your only regular season loss last year, and you lost by three at home. But that was year one of a coach. And based on your history, and what I found about lacrosse, I'm picking you to beat lacrosse on the road. It may go, it, it's, it's going to be a tough game, though. That game and the, the Roosevelt game is the ones I'm kind of iffy on. Uh, then Eau Claire, you beat them four, excuse me, correct myself, 59 to nothing at home. Good Lord. And you're playing them on the road. Okay, it may not be 59 to nothing, maybe 44 to 10, but you're still beating Eau Claire. So yes, folks, Wisconsin Whitewater, like they've done pretty much for the last decade, are going 10 and 0. Um, so time for you to let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Um, <sighs> Thanks everybody for watching. I'm going to give a little at the end of this, we're going to be a little bit of a sneak peek of the recap video because it's going to be a recap of the week, which wasn't much happened, but something else. First off, thanks everybody for watching. If you haven't done it already, do me a favor. Smash the like button, hit the thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm, helps the video be seen by more people. Comment on the video. Middle Tennessee State, Notre Dame, Toledo, Wisconsin Whitewater. Let me know which schools, what you think about the schools here down in the comments. Uh, share them if you want to. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, do me a favor, check out the video and check out some other videos I've done. If you like them, subscribe to the channel. You know, on the way to 700 subscribers, slowly but surely on the way to 1,000 to make some things happen. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, on X, the link will be in the description. The recap show, we, a lot of the recap show, I'm giving a little sneak peek, is a lot of it's got to do with a crazy rumor that popped up about Oregon State of Washington State going to the Big 12 now. 
And the timing of it for me is a little suspicious because of what was announced by the Pac-12. I'll explain in there. And also, I'm going to do my preseason top 25. I'll do that first in the video. My preseason top 25 will be in the recap video because there's not much that happened this week. I mean, the stuff about news and whatnot. I'll do a recap, my top 25, and I'm going to go through what's going on with Oregon State of Washington State. That'll be on Sunday. So that's what's going to be in the Sunday video so you know what's going on there because it's uh, I've been dealing with a lot of them on Twitter on X who strongly believe that they're going to be in the Big 12 next year. I'll get into it because this doesn't completely jive in. And also a rumor I've been hearing about for something else, a crazy idea about the Big 12 going to 24. I don't think it's getting that big in football. But in basketball, that may be a different story. But that's for Sunday. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you're having a great evening, or actually a great day, whenever you watch this video. Here comes the storm. Lightning in the distance, and the trees are blowing. And we pull the time up, and it's 2 minutes to 7 p.m. I'm recording this on Thursday for the for the Friday video. Um, yeah, Storm should be here any minute. It's creeping up, too. Guess we get this recorded, because I may be having this getting downloaded for a while, so... Uh, hopefully I don't send you a picture up of a community message with my windshield looking like Swiss cheese from Holt from... Um, Hail marks, hail hitting it. So thanks everybody for watching. Everybody's having a great day. Be safe and please be good to each other.